ask you. Skip it. Now, let me ask everyone a question. Did you get the impression that the movie The Last Temptation of Christ was a vulgar, sacrilegious interpretation of the life of, life of Jesus Christ that you saw it? Well, a lot of people got that impression because of a well-organized, well-financed campaign by various groups claiming to represent outraged Christians. But were they telling the truth or simply using the movie to rally support and money for their failed ministries, their TV ministries? I mean, I hear they've even put Tammy Baker's eyeshadow up for auction, huh? Come on, tonight, the controversy, is it a sacrilege or an honest human interpretation? Let's kick ass! <laughs> Let me introduce the folks at uh, home base and the gentlemen, of course, at uh, Loudmouth Number One. Some people are saying this show tonight should be entitled, uh, after looking at our audience, uh, The Last Temptation of Morton Downey Jr. Let me start with introducing Reverend uh, John Van Hannon. Is that right? <laughs> Rhymes with Shanahan. Banahan. Banahan. Right. Glory be to God, Father. How are you? All right. <laughs> Bye. You're the uh, former head of radio for the Archdiocese of Chicago. That's true. Is that correct? You, uh, did you work, work under Cardinal Bernadine there? Yes, I worked yeah. under Cardinal Cody, Cardinal Stritch, Cardinal Meyer. So you've been there for a while. Mm -hmm, yes. All right, and at home base number one, we have Ted. Correct me if I mispronounce your name, too. Ted Barr? Ted Bear. Like a teddy bear. Yeah, well, like a teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> Ted is president of uh, Goodwill Communications Atlanta, Georgia. First, to both of you gentlemen, all right? Father was Christ human. Yes. Ted was uh, Christ divine. Fully divine, fully human. All right. What are the major aspects of a human being, Father? I suppose uh, body and soul, the faculties, the senses, or a human being, the ability to think, willpower, all that makes up a human being. Temptation? Yeah. Yes, like temptation, certainly. We as human beings are usually sinful. Well, we're presented with temptation. Now, if we resist it, that's an occasion of great virtue. If we give into it, then we succumb to sin. But most of us, we assume, including the saints, have been sinners. Sometimes sinners, and sometimes, of course, they made their sanctity by resisting temptation, which is indeed the concept of this novel. But all of us, of I film. think Ted would agree, all of us at times resist temptation. True. So that sanctity That's is, virtuous. Not all, is, is virtuous, but in our sinful moments, that when we is succumb. almost satanic. Well, I wouldn't say satanic, but we do succumb to it. All Shows right. us our weakness. How about it, Ted? What are the aspects of divinity? Holiness, separateness, uh, total omniscience, omnipresence, it, that God was the ruler and the creator of the universe, a theistic God who created the universe, which is separate from him. Those are the attributes that we'd have to concentrate on here. Holiness is the most important with respect to this movie. Holiness, but we wouldn't say necessarily that those were the only uh, those were the only ingredients in divinity because a lot of us are at times holy. Holiness in the case of divinity is at all times eternal holiness. Am I correct? Uh, in humanity, uh, uh, humanness is the occasional temptation, the occasional succumbing to that temptation. Right, but you do not have to succumb to temptation to be human. Have you ever succumbed to temptation? Oh, of course. Okay. Let but me you, ask you first. You and your organization were among the first to protest the release of The Last Temptation of Christ. What about the movie did you and your organization find objectionable? Well, we had considered the Kazanzakis book very carefully. We brought up the issue of boycotting it in November because the movie and the book basically November shows of Jesus... Last year? November of last year. shows Jesus as saying, I am a sinner. Lucifer is inside me. Now, to imagine Lucifer being inside God would be a a horrible blasphemy of sacrilege. Was Lucifer ever a member of the, uh, of the angels in heaven? 
but he would not be inside a wholly separate God. But was he ever in, was he one of the angels? Was he a heaven? fallen angel? Yes. Biblically, yes. Before he fell, however, he had to have been an angel who was at the side of God. Right. All right. Now, it's my understanding that you were jumping up and down before the director, Martin Scorsese, even had the film developed. How did you know what was going to be in that movie when even he says he didn't? <laughs> well, several reasons. One, we had the book, which we studied very carefully. Well, the book, incidentally, Two, I can tell you, was, uh, was required reading in 1968, as far back in 1968, at Fordham University and some other Catholic universities. Right, right. Is that to say the Catholic uh, students and Catholics are not Christian? No. Okay. But you get a different impression reading a book than you do seeing a movie. There's a different impact on it. And it's a different position that it takes between the way the book acts on you and the movie acts on you. Two, Paramount had already developed the movie for two years, spent two million dollars on it. We had had that script. We knew what the script was going to be like. Three, when we announced the boycott, Universal came to us and said, look, this movie isn't going to be what the previous script was. We promise that in this movie, Jesus will be shown as sinless. Now, they broke that promise because in the movie, he says he's a sinner and a liar. Two, he said, we promise that he'd be shown fully God and fully man. Now, that's debatable. Three, he said that it'll show that he has redeemed mankind on the cross. Well, that's definitely not shown in the movie because he doesn't say that he's redeeming mankind. He's redeeming himself, no. which is a very pantheistic... All right, well, I'm, I'm not going to discuss that with you now because I did see the movie, yeah, all right? I know. And it's so fresh in my mind because I saw it today in its entirety. Uh, let me go to you, uh, Father uh, Banahan. This man has a copy of the script, all right? Is there any reason to expect, having read this script, that he wouldn't react violently to the movie? Well, I'm not sure what script he has. In the, uh, the mailing, which was sent out by Donald Wildman to about two and a half million people, there were supposed excerpts from the script. Now, I saw the movie, and what they said was the script is simply not in the movie I saw. There's I did a, a show previous to this, where I had seen these clips and someone asked me when I, the, the, the particular part I'm referring to when yeah. I quoted, uh, God's head is between woman's legs or something. I forget what it was. That's right. That's, and that doesn't right. happen in the movie. I went and saw the movie. It is not in there. But so right. for those who, uh, who uh, thought that I was saying that that was in the movie, it was not in the movie. And I did say that, all right? So I was wrong. I was inaccurate. No, no, why was that? Why was the advertising that I saw in the newspaper stating that as a fact that that was something that was in the movie, Ted? Well... I didn't do that advertising okay. in the first place. But the second place is that the Writers Guild just had a decision two and a half weeks ago that Martin Scorsese had been brought before the Writers Guild by Paul Schrader, who wrote the script. Mm -hmm. Paul Schrader said to him, that movie is line for line, scene for scene, except for two scenes worth of lines, exactly like what I wrote in the script back eight years ago. And the Writers Guild, after comparing the evidence, said they decided for Paul Schrader, they took off the other screenwriter credit, so that script that we have, except for two pages, perhaps, is exactly what's in the movie. Now, what they deleted was, of course, they deleted the line about, which was very anti-Jewish, of saying, I didn't choose you, you're not my people, I don't even like you. Uh, they deleted the line about uh, Who John deleted the Baptist's that line? Uh, tongue being like a burning coal. Because those lines were red flags. If they had put the line about the anti-Jewish line or the, uh, the homosexual line in there or God sleeps between my legs, that would have been the end of it. What about the description you give of the Last Supper in your script, where the Christ's body and blood turns into real flesh and it drips from their mouths and, and he then reduce, throws up? Right, John, they reduce that to but being the, the blood coming out of it. But, you know, I got sick at that scene. Watching the scene of the blood coming out, I almost got nauseous in the Universal Screening Room, which they granted me a screening after... I wrote him a letter saying I used to work for the U.S. Attorney's Morton, Office. Do you see the blood coming out of his mouth? I didn't see that. I did not see any that. flesh. Did no. not see any flesh. No, just the blood. He coughs yeah. up blood. Oh, come. <laughs> oh, no oh, point did I see that. Uh -huh. No point. Well, then they okay. cut it from the time Ted, you, must have seen the it. you must have seen a different screening. Now, no. I literally saw no, this I, four I hours ago. Yeah. At no point does Christ cough up blood in the Last Supper scene. No, Christ doesn't. Peter does. And it's on, it was in the screening on August 10th. But oh. there was a line that was taken out after the screening on August 10th because I brought it up on the Sonia Friedman show. I said, this movie, the worst aspect of the movie to me is the fact that the movie is, is biased and bigoted. The fact that it takes and tampers with somebody's faith structure. The fact that it targets Jesus Christ as a subject of making money, of pandering to Purian interests. 
And when I said on the Sony Friedman show that Jews nor Christians should like this film because of that line that God, you know, doesn't even like you, he didn't choose you, he doesn't even like you. Now, that was taken out afterwards, too. So they've edited the movie several times well, since. Well, but, you know, here, here's where I don't understand. Uh, I'm sure because of your background, you are familiar with theology. Then you know in the first 500 years of Christianity, there was great debate going on as to whether Christ was human or Christ was divine. As, that, as it turned out, the theologians who were writing at that time came together and agreed that Christ was both human and divine. Right, the Council of Chalcedon. Exactly. All right, so you did. Uh, of course, you've read Rex Dooney also, I see. All right? Huh. Okay. And there's the wonderful mystery to how a person can be both human and divine at the same time. This is the thing, I think, that excited uh, the Greek author and also Scorsese. And they tried to get inside the persona, the personality of Jesus Christ and say, how can a person do it both at once? Now, of course, we say that's a mystery. If I tell people I, I don't even know how to you know, break up an atom, let alone how to understand God, I recognize that God is a mystery. Right. But I'm intrigued by what goes on in the mind of Jesus Christ. He's both God and man simultaneously. I am too. I was very intrigued by that aspect of the movie. We're going to check it out later on, all right? Have the televangelists made this movie a scapegoat for their own now desperate situation? Let's check that out next. Let me start, let me uh, introduce our folks at uh, Loudmouth 1 and Loudmouth 2. Ted Bear moves up here at home base with uh, Father Banahan, and we've got at home base, let's see, John Putenwiedel, is that it? You got it right. Yeah. I'm here. Okay. How do you pronounce that? John Putenwiedel. Putenwiedel. That's right. <laughs> Putenwiedel. Putenwiedel. That's right. Sounds like a Del Shannon song. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And at Loudmouth number one, we have... Uh, uh, Forrester Church, is that correct? That's correct. Boy, where the hell did you guys find these names? <laughs> <laughs> Let me start off with uh, John. You organized 15,000 people in uh, New York to protest the movie that we're talking about. Weren't you kind of a little bit disappointed that the majority of people who saw the movie enjoyed it immensely and didn't even find it a bit offensive? Um, no, not really. In fact, uh, when I went in to see the movie, I found quite a lot of people leave the theater. Uh, at the know, end of the movie? Uh, <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Uh, even before the movie was over, I found quite a lot of people leaving the theater because, it's, as you know, it's a very long drawn, almost three hour long mm -hmm. uh, movie. Uh, and also I found that uh, by the end of the first week, they didn't have too many people in the Ziegfeld Theater in Manhattan as of now, for example, in some theaters in Connecticut, all they have is 25 people going into the theaters. Well, in a lot of the theaters, they had to spend a lot of time cleaning up the theaters, repairing the seats, sewing them back together again, because instructions were given to the protesters to uh, indeed rip up the seats, no, tear them up. Is that the Christian thing to do, sir? I, I totally disagree with that caricature, because none of the people that went in uh, were inspected to do so. As a matter of fact, majority of the people have been staying away from the theater. Just in their good Christian way, they bought along a nicer with the know, You know, Maud, as I see it, what I don't understand is uh, where is the freedom that we have to protest what we think is the most grotesque way You have way all of the freedom in the world, pal, all right? But when you take out ads, wait a second, when you take out ads that give, that give facts, to the to words that were never said in the movie. We did not they, take out any ad. I can't find anyone who took out these full page well, ads. Well, you know, had to have cost them eighteen grand in no, the New York Times. I've got we, it right here. We did not. I've I got it right here. I counted. The I Catholic counted League for Religious and Civil Rights did not take out any ad of this type. Ten, ten quotes. Very right. objectionable quotes. Let me hear Catholic them. League no, for Religious them, and Civil please. Rights All did right. not take out any ad of uh, Jesus says to Judas. No, I don't have any pride. I don't go to synagogue. I disobey the commandments. That's still in the movie. That, that is, not is not in the, in the movie. It is not that in the is movie. Not in the movie. That, well, that August 10th, it was in the movie. Well, an amazing crowd. An amazing all these crowd. Forgive my son, he's crazy. Now, I can imagine, in fact, that way back then, Mary might have felt that sometimes. Because this is a man, this is, what was in the movie? 
Marshall was in the movie at that you know, point. I was I'm Mary, happy Mary was just, in the movie. You know, I'm I happy saw. you're saying that these were taken out of the movie. This just shows the effectiveness of the boycott. No, what was they were taken you. out of the movie. Well, let me show you, know, you something. Let me show you something. Right? Heard for a let me time. show you something. I got some pressure. It's on television. I'm going to get my butt kicked for it, all right? And I got some pressure to do this show, to go see that movie, and to bring the truth out into the open. And I succumbed to the pressure. I went to see the movie. Am I, am I glad? Am I? Shut your mouth, pal. Shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. Get him out of here. Get this pig out of here. Hey, I'll knock you right on your face. I'll hear you. Take him out. Take him out. Take him out. Take a breath.